I also, I love how all the not quite Christians in Christian movies describe their beliefs as like, you know, I'd like to believe in, quote, something bigger than ourselves. What is that bullshit euphemist? Antelopes are bigger than ourselves, right? Unless you're really fucking big. Well, in my personal experience, something bigger than ourselves means you have two more sentences before I cry and this date is over. So <laughs> I can only speak from my own personal experience. <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because fuck us. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. David A.R. White. I missed him so much. Oh my God. I, I missed him. It's, just, it's upsetting to realize how much I missed him. <laughs> it's so, I, I love him. He's like a cuddly pillow that you, you know, that you lost and then you just found it and it gets stuffed behind the, Behind the bed, back by the oh. end, you're like, oh, I love this fucking pillow. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. that. And this but is a, yep. peak David A.R. White. Yeah. This uh, is like yes. the like this is like the 67 Chevy of David A.R. White. It's really, <laughs> really perfect. This is David A.R. White in his full pecu, pecu, pecu. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. And of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. I'm a man whose love life has been reinvigorated by outfit stuff. <laughs> what? what? The gam streak continues. It's th David A. R. White is the outfit stuff of gam movies. Yep. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, I just thought of Did what you, you heard, and that was very, okay. yeah, very upsetting <laughs> for you guys. What? We don't get to talk about our our sex lives ever. I'm not a machine. I'm a man. How are you feeling, doing, Noah? Well, I got a blowjob last night, Eli, so I'm doing well, just fine. Anna's dressed as David A. R. White right now. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Fantastic. <laughs> this is the parasocial content people want. <laughs> I'm t I keep trying to start an OnlyFans. These guys won't let me. So, <laughs> all right. So tell us, Heath. And we we have already obviously established that it is a David A. R. White movie Damn and or fucking right it is outfit stuff. But what will we be breaking down today? We watched Jerusalem Countdown. Finally, oh, it's a movie from 2011 based on a book from 2007 by. Armageddon pastor John Hagee. Hagee. <laughs> and it's the story of how the Bible correctly predicted the apocalypse of 2014. <laughs> so um, for those who don't follow <laughs> international news very closely, in 2014, <laughs> the world ended. This is the movie about that. Yep. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, remember Blood Moon? All the yeah. <laughs> there's, a there's a tetrad. It's yeah. it's a four. And movie. Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Well, if you love your aunt's Facebook posts about the coronavirus, but you wish they contained more completed Jews, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this movie. Oh, <gasps> it's so good. <gasps> It's it's wonderful. One of the best parts of our job is the insight into the other worldview. And this is such a how fucking up your own ass is your head when you're like, <laughs> you see, they nuke seven American cities as a distraction to take on Israel. Like, that's the level of self sodomy going on at the basic core plot of this film. Yeah. Did you say distraction? Oh. <laughs> so like, smoke bomb, but a nuke? Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. Just bomb, bomb. <laughs> <laughs> all right, before we go into the, all the best, worst, and shit, complete the sentence for me. This is the best David A.R. White movie I have seen since blank. <laughs> before I started watching it. <laughs> what? Okay, what's the one where he's like Zach Morris in <laughs> uh, Second Chance? Wow, really? Yes. Second Glance. Yep. Second Glance. Yeah. Glance. Was it Second Glance? Yeah. I think it might have been okay. Glance. Yeah. That was pretty great. Hold on, though. No, no, no. What's the one? 
It's re- oh, it's Revelation Road with the, that was the giant it. Yes, exactly. hammer. That's Revelation where I was Road. going. I the was giant saying, hammer. There was a correct with the, answer. The vase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, right. There was a war hammer the last time he, David A.R. White was this good. He a war hammer and he like has a motorcycle fight and the hammer spins out and explodes next to the car. The, the leaping uh, handcuffed somersault to the gun thing. <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> Right, he like that, that's the so moment bad. that perfectly oh, encapsulates Revelation that. Road to me. This is the best it's been since that. Yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm on David A. R. White's IMDb page, and we've <laughs> seen all of these fucking I movies. I know, it's damn near everything he's ever done at this point. It's real Eventually, bummer. one day we're going to meet this guy, and it's going to be really fucking weird. Yeah, we're yeah. going to meet him when we fund him to make his next movie, because we ran out, and we're like, he needs to make another one. <laughs> Uh, we had him a giant check like Ed McMahon. <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. <laughs> so many great, great options. But I'm going to go with best, worst, best, best, best army guys jumping out of a pickup truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You obviously we're, we're talking about the guys with the giant parkas on. Absolutely. Yes. yes. That's exactly what I'm talking okay, yes. about. <laughs> It's the greatest single moment of action in this movie. Even with so much competition from David A.R. White, he's not even in this moment. So clearly he got like two of his paintball buddies and dressed them up like with the park. It's, it's like terrorist ice capade characters or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Yep. And they get they get dropped off to do bad guy stuff. And they fucking explode out of the back of this pickup truck, just backflips and somersaults, <laughs> doing tactical paintball maneuvers, that making they noises, noises. Shush, shush. Ha, ha. <laughs> so it's fucking. And yeah. the funniest part about it to me is that it's all in like two and a half foot deep snow. <laughs> it's yep. in, it's the best, and and it's for no reason. They're like yep. posing as never. if they're on they a never runway matter. at points, and then they go back oh. into it. But again, no reason. At this point, they're just walking over to a fence with nobody around, like <laughs> yes. 20 feet away. Dive roll, risk yes. control. Yes. Yeah. Flip. You're risk controlling me now. We're on. It hurt. Uh, we're on. Okay. <laughs> so, so, okay. So Eli already alluded to this a bit, but I'm going to go with best worst Rube Goldberg plot. Yep. Right. <laughs> At some point in this goddamn plot, a balloon popped to force a chicken to lay an egg that would roll down into a spoon. This plot has more random <laughs> devices that don't work than a goddamn radio shack. It's like it's like the fucking moon landing hoaxers hired Heath Ledger's Joker to help Glenn Beck take over the fucking world. <laughs> Oh, and see, I was going to go simple. I was just going to go with best worst inciting incident. So, oh, please identify what, the what inciting would incident. <laughs> yes. Would that be the creation of Israel? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> but there is a subplot of this movie that is based entirely on the fact that brown people moved in across the street. <laughs> An entire subplot will be based on that. <laughs> yep. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of yarn to unspool over these pushpins, so we're going to need a quick break, but we're going to be back in a minute with all the grown men playing guns that is Jerusalem Countdown. Countdown. (laughs) Hey, everybody. Hey, Craig. Uh, Who's this? Oh, uh, this is my drunken shitty uncle. A pleasure, my lady. I'm a guy. All right, well, why, is, why is your hair so long? Seriously? You you brought your drunk, shitty uncle to our writer's meeting? Yeah. Fuck you. He and my aunt are fighting right now. Do, do you mind? I mean, kind of. You know what you should write your movie about? What? What? You should write about Israel. And they get attacked by the Muslims in Russia. Muslims and they in have, Russia. Get, shh, shh, let me finish. And they have... Suitcase nukes, so that rapture. They have, okay, I don't really they have the think rapture. that's the. Please don't interrupt. Everyone. The rapture is the last thing I said. You you don't think the CIA like they don't have like a full time team tracking the Bible? They fucking do. 
They follow the Bible. It's the wait, wait it's like truth. Like physically? It tells you yep, physically the Bible, phys- spiritually, you name it. Just whatever. That's that's why it won't let me drive my car without the the breather thing. Well, no, no, that's because of your DUI. No, no, I I got the, I get the shot. You're on some fucking whore. Who's what happened? I think what? I think he means STD. Whatever. DUI. What? Whatever. Kids these days, the, the pronouns. It's got I need a nap. I'm just take a little nap. Okay. You just want to make everything he just said into a movie? Yes. <laughs> Hello there. It's me, Heath Enright, here to tell you about Puzzle in a Thunderstorm's brand new show, D&D Minus, where you'll get to hear me, Heath Enright, win at Dungeons and Dragons. Heath, nobody wins at Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, the show stars my character, Dave the Dragon, who is winning. And yes, you do win. He's a dragonborn. He's a dragon wizard dragon. Not- not a wizard. Who is awesome at everything and a dragon. I wizard. mean, mostly you spray poison on food you want. Tune but... in to hear the story of Dave and his sidekicks, Noah, Anna, and Morgan's characters, many adventures with Eli as the dungeon uh, assistant helper guy. Dungeon masters, what it's To called. the regional it's... helper. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. Or check the show notes. D&D Minus. Dave 31 Dice zero. That's not a score. Oh, it's a score. It, he's right. It, it technically is a score. Yep. A2, Noah. At two. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to start off on some good old fashioned Christian movie apocalypse. <laughs> Rapture apocalypse. I got so Hell excited yeah. right away. Yeah, no, we immediately, we open on the everyone run in different directions rapture again. <laughs> again. Oh. What, why would you run in any direction? I, I don't, don't understand. Know. I don't know. Neither do the extras because they just run back to where they started, right? Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> They're on loop like fucking NPCs in a video game. <laughs> and okay. So we see, we, we see that they, they had the money to crash a truck, but not a helicopter. <laughs> no. Well, that helicopter went behind that tree and made a lot of noise. Oh, but no, they, but, Toby. <laughs> but then they show us the sad clothing, like floating down from the sky, supposed to represent Ooh. the people getting raptured out of that helicopter, I guess. Right. Oh, is that okay? Oh. All right, yes. Okay, wow, you just solved such a huge fucking mystery for me. Oh, well, yeah, for a second, I was like, evangelical skydivers all around? I was thinking maybe, like, he let them be dressed for, like, the first 80 or 90 feet and then zamped them out of their clothes or something. But no, that makes, okay. <laughs> the angels are bringing them up, and God's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Leave their clothes. Leave their clothes. Haven't you seen any of my movies? Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right, but then we cut to six days earlier, right? So we're going to lead into that uh, rapture, but we know it's coming. So if we cut six days earlier. We are at a ship docked in Chicago. Fun fact, from this movie, I learned that Chicago has a port. I also learned it takes me Seriously? four tries to write the word port without accidentally writing the word porn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've been to Chicago together multiple times <laughs> on the lake. We've seen it. Whatever. Right, so. Why would you put a port on a lake? That's ridiculous. And this, by the way, is... <laughs> why would you put a porn on a lake? <laughs> <laughs> no, that well, obvi- it's obvious why you would do that. Thank you. <laughs> silly, silly question, Heath. All right, so this is where I learned that this was based on a book by John Hagee. I got really excited. And we're, what we're watching here is we're watching these guys. They're all sneaking these... Big pastel colored suitcases off of a boat. <laughs> they use this is supposed to be like a mobster drug deal yep. terrorism something, but they used David Ayer White's mom's luggage. So <laughs> you want to have a different color because everyone's going to have a brown one when you go when you get to the carousel. You want to have something <laughs> bright like a purple. That's true. This I go with I'm, the yellow. Yeah, this is why the I gave you the minions yellow. bag yeah. when when away advertised for us. <laughs> but what this means is. That the Antichrist spent a bunch of time <laughs> picking out nice luggage to hold his weapons. 
Right. Well, and and he didn't just figure out one bag that would work. He's like, no, I want seven different colors. It could be a little rainbow. You guys can walk. It'll be a little rainbow. It'll be nice. There's seven of them. Right. It just makes sense. It's called eclectic. <laughs> they don't match. It's on purpose. I'm so, the Antichrist. <laughs> And this is where we're reminded that all of the bad guys from Christian movies all come from the land of Guttera, right? They, they, <laughs> they show up with these uh, uh, things, and the guy just goes, Rattle so jump not there. And, and everybody shoots the guys carrying the suitcases and takes them away, right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then all the bad guys take their stepdaughters to soccer practice. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and they're very... <laughs> practical minivan that they <laughs> then drive away. away in. All the terrorists get into the little minivan the and drive it away. There's like, put the suitcases in the back and there's also plenty of cup holders if you need them. <laughs> Do you guys extra. want me to put on Minions too? Yeah, Minions too! <laughs> so, alright. And then we get a little title card. Jerusalem Countdown. <laughs> Well, yeah, John Hagee's been doing a Jerusalem countdown for decades now. <laughs> yeah. He's been like two and a half for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> How many times has he predicted it and missed? Like eight or nine publicly oh. with different <laughs> scenarios each time? It's the best. Quite a few. Quite, I, he, I, I, he hasn't done one since 2015, right? That was his last. Oh, so he's he's batting a thousand since then. <laughs> <laughs> or zero. <laughs> Infinity, yep. same whatever. Number. Yeah, exactly. All the same idea. All right. So, yeah. And, and now we cut to uh, Washington, D.C., where we have. <laughs> so what's going on here? We got David A.R. White watching the news, tracking what's going on with the Middle East. You can tell by his computer. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy who's giving this speech, it's like David A.R. White's version of Fox News, right? So too hot for Fox News because his. His speech is basically like, look, some people don't want peace. Muslims. Which leads <laughs> yes! to the single biggest threat we have. So Muslim. yeah, he's going, he's like, hey, look, the key to understanding the Middle East is to understand that the Jews are the good guys. The Muslims are the bad guys. That's right. The bad guys. Um, <laughs> and of course, and we, we have to establish that David A.R. White is single. So we have the single guy food spread going on around. Oh. <laughs> but they do it so badly. There's, so, okay, there's a pizza box. Yeah. And there's the, like, stereotypical Chinese thing with the, the you know, lo mein with the, the hashi in there. There's also a bottle of San Pellegrino. Like a <laughs> yes, big. That is. Like, and, like, stacks, like, empty ones. Like, he was binging on very nice sparkling water and, <laughs> and Chinese and pizza. I want to talk about David A.R. White here because it's been a while since yeah. I've seen him and he, oh, yeah. he really fantastic sits up in this movie. So first of all, in this movie, he doesn't have a beard so much as he looks like he was eating a beard and got some on his face. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Commedia del art trope trying to pick up chicks after a bad divorce. That's, that's <laughs> okay. Picturing. Well, my only note on him was like, <laughs> David A.R. White looks good right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's only because we Perception. know where he's going, right? You wouldn't think that if this was the first you saw of him. So, and oh, by the way, I have to point this out because this is, he's he's watching this on TV, but he's got like four screens going like the Matrix or whatever. So and dumb. in the middle, he's got his computer. Here's what's on the computer. An FBI logo, a box full of <laughs> Python script, a teeny, teeny, tiny, small bar graph, the words... Middle East database just in a box by themselves, <laughs> no database connected to them. A list of phone numbers off to the left. That might be the database in question. And a picture of a satellite and a picture of the Earth in case okay. he forgets which planet he's so, on. So that means the FBI wrote a database slash exposition program. <laughs> And the screen display reminds you of your planet and that you are, in fact, an FBI agent. Yep, you know yes, about computers, exactly. sir. Like, it's so dumb. All right. So he gets a Skype call from Brian, though, who has the files he was looking for, along with a little more exposition. Right. <laughs> yeah. Basically just reciting back more stuff like, oh, 
So speaking of you didn't we're not speaking of anything yet. We just started. Well, speaking <laughs> of you had a wife who got killed, right? And now yeah, you're like gritty. Super depressing. Are you not grittier now? Backstory. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, wait. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but like this never comes up again, right? I I don't think he had a wife who got killed. I think that is a picture of Eve, and we're supposed to watch him like they had a breakup. He's mourning their breakup. So That's he, I I think he, you might be right because like he has. He has a framed picture of his ex girlfriend from multiple years ago, right there. Yep. Yeah. Up. Oh, like you don't, Heath. <laughs> I don't. I have. All a right, piece moving. Of art on. from an ex girlfriend. <laughs> it's not. It's not a picture of her. So, stupid example. So we learned that he had a girlfriend, and they broke up because of reasons or something that will never fully be fleshed out. <laughs> and then. He gets off the phone with this guy, gets another call from crazy informant guy. Yeah. And there's this amazing moment where he's like, who are you? And the guy's like, my name is Namey Mc... Don't say McName face. face. <laughs> God damn it. Except, despite that delivery, that will be this character's yeah, actual be, name. It will be later identified. Was like, oh, it's Namey McName face productions over here. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes. What was the name? Arlen Rockwell? Yeah. Arlen Rockwell. Yep. Yeah. So he, he clearly said Norman Rockwell, and they were like, change that. <laughs> Dude, come on. He's like, no. Arlen. Arlen. It's, it's different. Well. No, you're not. <laughs> so, but Arlen Rockwell says he's got some very important information from the FBI, and he has to talk to him tonight. Meanwhile, in Edgewood, Virginia, the, these little title, these little subtitles keep coming up and telling us which city in Virginia we're in over and over again. So this one is in Edgewood, Virginia. We meet evil bad guy who's assembling purple laser <laughs> pens like he's going to distract <laughs> attack cats with them later or something. Well, yeah, what? Oh. At this point, like they do something with it. But at this point, we're just like, all right, evil guy. Has his black light pen complete? Yep. What the, yeah. He's going to see all the cum stains. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What is happening? And then he answers the phone. And here's how he answers the phone. This is in this my movie, favorite I thing. shit you not. He goes, this is the fallen one. <laughs> which, which I love because that means he gets spam phone calls. Yes. Right? Your Google business listing. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I'm going to... Oh, I hate these. It's so good. <laughs> because what if there really is a problem with my social security, though? Then what will I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he answers, this is the fallen one. And you can just hear the frustration from the other guy on the other end. He's like, hey, Dave, it's Alan. <laughs> and then there's this long pause. And Alan's like, uh, sorry, okay. This is Dark Minion. You're damn you right it's Dark now? Minion. Okay. This All right. So then. dumb. But except for the guy on the other end of the phone is taking it even more seriously than he is. Right? He's the he's got the voice modifier thing going on. He goes, <laughs> Hello, my son. That's right. Is there much to report? Except the voice modifier is way too low, yes. so I had no fucking idea what he was saying. He was like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> God, if it had just panned over and Cookie Monster hangs up the phone, <laughs> pensively bites into a cookie, this is my favorite fucking movie. I, wa I wanted Dave to acknowledge that or Fallen One or whatever, to be like, dude, just, I mean, you can turn off the voice. Like, we know each other. You're not. <laughs> what are you? I'm talking in my normal voice. How is this accomplishing anything now? I can't, uh, I can't understand you. Oh, my God. So they start talking in this code, and this code is going to come back. A best worst code could have very easily been <laughs> any of our nominees. <laughs> and it was so bad that I, I wrote the whole goddamn thing down as it was happening. I was like, oh, this is just delicious. I had no idea they were going to bring it back. But I have to point out one line in it, which is where he says to where the fallen one says to the guy with the voice modulator, he goes, the stork is delivered. <laughs> Are you, so, you sure? Are you sure? Pretty sure you got that backwards. That's, <laughs> I mean, wrong, but that you didn't even get the wrong thing right. Wow. And doesn't at, right after that he says we're awaiting the Decalogue from yep. Mother. From Mother. And the movie's convinced that Decalogue is code, but it's not. That's the ten, everybody knows that's the Ten Commandments, and they're using it's so dumb. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, but okay, but it's it's one of the many things that this movie puts in, going like, oh, if he was a Christian, he would have known, you know, or something like that, because they assume that we don't know, right? Because there's all no their Christians shit. at the NSA. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or the FBI. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So now we're in Jamestown, Virginia, right? And and David A. R. White has gone off to meet with Arlen Rockwell, who is apparently a smuggler. I have questions about his house. Does he have, and I see we all have notes on this, so this is very important, a TV tray full of nail polish next to his chair? He does. That is my guess. He does, and it's a lot. It's a lot of different nail polish. He also has a lot of soy sauce, multiple options for soy sauce, it appears. Yep. And it's another, he's been on a bender like, David A.R. White from four, because he's also single. But th this time, the bender was peanuts. It's like empty <laughs> jars of peanuts. It's so ridiculous. He took the death of Mr. Peanut really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so yeah, so they have this bizarre conversation where like the guy keeps hinting at shit without saying it. He's like, it, because because he's class, he's obviously the guy that's going to get killed at the end of the scene before he can give out all the information. Right. So he's trying to give as many clues as he can before that happens. He says to David A.R. White at one point early in this conversation, and I quote, did you know that Iran is poised to control the flow of oil through the Straits of Hormuz? A fucking court, um, dude. Yeah. Are, have you ever seen a map? I did know that. I, like, is that the question? <laughs> yes. I knew that. They are. He also has a great moment where he goes, I'm not a bad man, but there are some things I won't do. I wrote in my notes, like button this shirt, for example. <laughs> <laughs> he says at one point, Iran is at least as much of a threat as Hitler. I'm like, well, now, right? Because Hitler's dead. <laughs> like, I'd say they're even more of a threat. Yeah. <laughs> But David Arrowhead's like, yeah, right. You know, Iran, Nazi Germany. Uh huh. Uh huh. Go yeah. Ahead. No. Right. Yeah. No. I get it. By the way, did did anyone else notice who this actor was? Mm. That's Lee Majors. Oh, that was Lee Majors. Wow. Yes. Yes. That's rough. That's yeah, sad, isn't it? That's almost as sad as we're gonna find oh, out. Randy yes, Travis. So <laughs> I think wow. they might have just gone to Lee Majors' actual house and been like, "Hey, we have a camera," and he'd been like. Come on in. I was just painting my <laughs> fingernails for yeah. the 400th time today. <laughs> you, you're taking a lot of acid reflux pills. Yeah, right. It's a lot of, well, a lot of peanuts, sauce. too. Okay, I, uh, okay. I wash them down. I wash my acid reflux pills down with this soy sauce, you see. <laughs> they oh. don't work. <laughs> Next time I drink water, just a solid thing is going to fall out the bottom of me exactly in my shape. It's going to be a fucking nightmare, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, Lee Majors. And sorry, I wanna, we're, we're going to meet Stacy Keach, too. So Randy Travis, Lee Majors, and Stacy Keach are in this movie. Sergeant fucking Stadenko. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. All right. So Lee Majors is trying to tell the FBI he smuggles some smuggly shit now and again, but this time he's smuggled something that's a little bit too bad, right? And, and he's coming clean about it. So he goes like, Mr. Daughtry, that's David A.R. White's character. He's like, they, I smuggled something into the country called Seven Wonders. And Seven Wonders is the... Let me pause. One second. Get some water. Get ready for snack. it. <laughs> get and I'm dead. I got and shot. Get shot, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, but David A.R. White can action now. Pew, pew is written in the script. Oh, no question. <laughs> he chases the hitman down, right? They do They do a little oh, chase God. scene. Oh, God. The chase scene is so good. Wait, there's one more I have to mention in the chase scene. David A.R. White, so the stuntman runs off to, to the roof, and he jumps off of this roof onto this car, and then he jumps off the car onto the ground and runs away. David A.R. White's chasing him. He's on the roof. He looks down. This car is four fucking feet below him. The camera cuts, right? And he's like, he, like yup. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. What? he basically turns to the camera is like, fuck this. No, no. And then we cut to him like <laughs> dropping two inches onto the car and running off. I love it. Oh, Sorry. And oh. Also, this guy that he's chasing is way too much in good shape. And David R. White is absolutely not. <laughs> so they have to make so many edits 
to constantly erase the running gaps that keep yes, forming. Yes, yes. That's the best. <laughs> but yeah, and eventually they wind up in this uh, warehouse, right? Yep. Yeah. The the informant guy lives in a fancy suburb right next to an abandoned warehouse lair. Yeah, right, right, yes. <laughs> so worked out. Jamestown's a weird city, I, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> he literally disables this assassin by shooting barrels near him, like a video <laughs> Yes! He, I thought he was going to camp out where the guy would respawn in a second. <laughs> Why would an abandoned warehouse... <laughs> Leave barrels of explosives inside. <laughs> Seems like a bad plan, but they all do it. We all have them. All right. So then we cut back to Chicago, Illinois. We meet this reporter guy who needs to finish his damn article on the damn peace, damn talks, damn it. You know, <laughs> and it, it, the, so the, the dynamic that we get here, he is a reporter that's working on the Middle East story. Uh, his wife is a born again Christian that just can't get through to him with her biblical wisdom. The perfect sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing his research. She comes by. She's like, I've highlighted a few pages of the Bible that might help your current events research. And he's like, damn it, woman. You know, <laughs> how's your research going? You want to use a 2000 year old book that doesn't know about germs? Why are you being you know? such a bitch about this? Every time. <laughs> <laughs> she also explains to him about the prophecy that's in the Bible. For instance, did you know that the Bible predicted Jews going to a place? Oh, my fucking. Yeah. She's like, listen to how <laughs> not insane I sound when I explain this. It just starts going off on all the prophecies in Ezekiel that have come Ezekiel! true. <laughs> yep. Oh, <laughs> Ezekiel. I have no metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Ezekiel no is like it's Ezekiel. Like, yes. It's like, it's like being like, oh, okay. I don't know my way around politics. Well, you know that guy who lives out front of our building who will throw you his poop at you if it's his birthday? Well, I've invited him in to help with our discussion. Shaggy Randy, <laughs> what do you have to say about this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Now we cut to Langley, Virginia. I, if, so they keep putting up the names of different cities that are all within like two and a half hours of each other to make it seem like this movie's going on all over the fucking place, I guess. But this is where we're going to meet a love interest, right? Eve and B country music legend, Randy Travis. <laughs> what? How? <laughs> I want to know the series of events that ended in Randy Travis being in this movie. Uh, I'll start it for you. Cocaine. <laughs> yeah, there's only two oh, ways to get that too. figure. That's the other the is beginning cancer. and end yeah. of that story. <laughs> oh, he is looking rough. He, oh, like, yeah. yeah. So he needs a fucking sandwich. He's falling apart. <laughs> He looks like Slender Man just got clean and is making a go of it, but like, <laughs> he's going to go back. He's going to go back. Yep. And that's exactly what he looks like, Eli. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> like, once again, you don't have a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he is the CIA agent that's being a little coy with the FBI agent that wants to know why people will die in the Middle East or something. Right. So Eve, Eve goes up to him and she's like, hey, Jack, sorry to, you know, interrupt your smoldering rage whiskey, but um, <laughs> Muslims are Nazis. Uh, I think yeah. we can all agree on that. <laughs> I will need some information about that. Also, are you the sham wow guy? You have to tell us. <laughs> so, yeah. So he hands her some information, but not the information she needs, damn it. And then. In the parking lot, Eve runs into this mysterious guy. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I'll spoil it. This guy, this white American guy with very clearly an American accent, is the head of Mossad. <laughs> Wait, he, he was? Yep. Yeah. And her father. <laughs> okay. I didn't catch that this. <laughs> he was supposed to be. Okay. This. Makes equally still no sense. Okay, yeah, ahead. right, right. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I didn't just make it make any more sense. But also, of course, he's Sergeant fucking Stadenko. This is Stacy Keach. This is Stacy Keach, exactly. Okay. <laughs> 
But yeah, so he pulls Eve into his car and he's like, hey, I, I needed to tell you something super quick, uh, very important information that was just <laughs> uncovered on that case that you're working on. Jesus is the king of the universe and you should turn your life over to him and he loves you very much is the information <laughs> that's, that I But that that's hear. what he's he's the head of Mossad. This, that makes it so much better. Yeah, the right? head of Mossad is saying to her, also an intelligence agent, uh, so I realized that the Bible is complete literal truth. So I flew here to the U.S. to make sure U.S. foreign policy reflects that. Yes. From now on. Nope. Yes. This is important. Nope. I really need more spy movies with a prophetizing deep throat. Like, this is a real, <laughs> there's a real opportunity. Agent Henderson, thanks for meeting me. So you got a lead boss? Oh, yeah. A big one. Oh, uh, it's Klemeski, isn't it? Damn it. Should have known. Never trust a Russian, right? Okay. okay. Uh, this is far more serious than that, Agent Henderson. Oh. What if I told you that you could make as much money from home as most people do in a year just by um, having a part? So are you, like, speaking code? Is this, um... Like a safe house thing? No, are you, are you doing no that code now? at all. No, no, this is a business opportunity. Um, Have you ever heard of Thrive? Oh my God, Anderson? seriously? You, you got caught up in an MLM? Is that what's happening right now? No, no, no. Okay, it sounds I just, just like that. I just, I'm, I'm making a passive no, income. No, no, of, no, well, you're not. No, well, you're if you sign not. up for the starter package. It's absolutely not going to happen. Seriously? The, the protein bars are really delicious. Yeah, are they? Okay, uh, why, don't, why don't you eat one right now? One of those oh, protein I, bars I that will. are delicious. Sure. Just, cool. Um, <coughs> mm -hmm. Yummy. Good. All right, I'm Yum. leaving. It's so dry. Exactly. It would be so much better if it was just <laughs> Thrive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he wants her to see that Jesus is the only path to heaven. And she, for her, to her credit... Fucks off. She's like, you know what? I'm done now. I'm leaving. leaving. Oh, we're all done with the spy stuff. Cool. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah. And then because damn it, if they're not going to get their money's worth out of those groovy place name subtitles, we cut to a, an FBI interrogation facility in Bethesda, Maryland. That's a different <laughs> place. It's also yeah. it's in the region, different state. It's <laughs> a real place. <laughs> There's an original pancake house there. Just so everybody knows. So yeah. So now Davy has that guy that he exploded with the barrels. That he just he just knocked him unconscious, and he woke up in the interrogation room reciting the Book of Revelation. Apparently, <laughs> and there's like a, a low level FBI person here. Tells but, him by, that. by the way, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but by low level, you mean black. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's real upsetting how that plays out. Actually. Every time in this movie, it happens like five times. Yeah. It's it's a woman of color here and she's definitely low level and she gets it's 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 very upsetting. But she says, hey, just so you know, David A.R. White, um, the guy in custody, he recited the book of Revelation six times. I was counting and he's like. Why the fuck were you counting? Me? Please, <laughs> please leave. But then, but then he like thinks about it a little bit more, and he's like, "Wow, six times, impressive, actually." Okay, yeah. How is that, that more mean? impressive than one? Yeah, <laughs> once you've got it memorized, you've just got it. Like if she said three, he would have been like, "All right, fucking yeah. amateur. I'm just going straight to bad cop. This will be easy." So, yeah, so David A.R. White goes in to question him, but the guy is not being very cooperative at all. He won't even tell him what Seven Wonders is. <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt your revelations, mumbling. Heard about the six times. Congrats on that. You want some coffee or juice? <laughs> I, know, I know mumbling will dry you up. So. What kind of juice? Also, as he enters the room, this is such an important acting moment. He goes, John Doe. And I've never been more sure of anything than I am that David A.R. White thinks that is the name of the other character. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so the guy won't help him. And he says, you know, he's questioning away. But then suddenly the guy like springs into action, grabs David A.R. White by the back of the head and slams his face against the table. And then he does it again about 106 times because I figured out how to back 10 seconds. 
<laughs> on this on the pure blinks player. So oh, oh I was so a- mad for a second. I was like, did my fucking skip? What? <laughs> <laughs> I only Mine came didn't. once. I could have come 106 times. <laughs> yeah. I did anyways. But. It's so good. Yeah, he just basketballs his fucking head off of the table and then starts to run off. But just then, Eve, the mysterious love interest that broke up with him slash died earlier in the fucking movie or whatever, shows up and saves his ass. Right? Just before the bad guy can escape. <laughs> from a holding room in FBI headquarters or wherever they are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Into the gr- great wild beyond. So, okay. Meanwhile, back in Chicago, reporter dude is, is watching this movie's Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> and again, right, right. this is the, this is the too hot for Fox news guy. And now he's explaining to us that they can't agree because so-called compromise involves Israel doing anything. And oh that is fucking untenable. God. Yeah. This is a hard one to listen to, actually. This, Yeah, this is pretty rough. At one point he says, yeah, we gave up land in 1948. No. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? What else happened land-wise with Israel? Yeah. So, you know, England gave up all of India. I don't know if you guys know that or not. It's a, a lot of land. This is moment where he's like, every time we give up land, it grows terrorists. We gave up Lebanon. We got Hezbollah. We gave up Gaza. We got Hamas. And I'm like, yep, that's what's happening. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think those groups popped up because of the land that was given. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think so. that was the focus. <laughs> so. And he finishes by saying, we're the only country made by God. What? I'm just, I'm, I'm, excuse me, sir, but I have this high school textbook from Texas that would beg to differ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, oh. Ninhursag of Mesopotamia just throws the remote on <laughs> TV. Like, Fucking fuck Mesopotamia has no more <laughs> land to give, assholes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So he finishes his whole like, no, actually, if anything, Israel has been too generous. We've had complaint speech. <laughs> oh, and then we get a, a very quick moment of the, the fallen one. Remember from the phone call? He's preparing a bomb, but what? They didn't have C4, so they just used clay. <laughs> so, Oh, is that what he was doing? <laughs> yeah. I wrote evil guys making those ASMR videos where you cut soap. <laughs> <laughs> I said he's making something out of clay. I bet it's a dreidel. Oh, I, yeah, I thought he was just, like, playing with clay. <laughs> just like, Lulu Lu, doing Fallen One stuff with clay. <laughs> you know. be. All right, so now Eve is uh, filling in Davy. Like, oh, my God, this is such an awkward way they come back on this fucking scene. So she's filling Davy in on all about all the stuff she knows about the, the guy that he explodey barreled earlier, right? Yeah. Her opening line is, he's a spook. Maybe find a better mm. phrase to refer to your only actor of color in the movie. I, I honestly, I think that fucking David A.R. White got excited when he learned that he got to use the term spook if he made that character a CIA agent. Yep. Right. Oh, he's Very like, much. oh, 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 if we have him in custody, we could call him our spook, couldn't we? Yes, David, we could <laughs> call him. David. <laughs> I also love to like over and over again in this movie, everyone is like crazy sexist to this character, Eve. Yes. But the movie is completely unaware of it. It is the only through line that this film has. Yeah. Like everybody's constantly like, you know, you could smile once in a while. And the movie's like the, the script is like, well, she could smile once in a while. I mean, <laughs> really. Uh, but this is where we're going to get their backstory and why they broke up and why he was brooding at her picture. Are we, though? Well, yeah, because he's like, are you still mad at me about the backstory the thing? And she's like, the time you, you <laughs> killed a bunch of people. Yeah, man, I'm still mad about that. And he's like, no, it was a good tip. And she's like, no, it was a bad tip. And I just wanted someone in the movie to be like, was it true? There's a way to tell if the tip is <laughs> true or not. Was it that he killed a bunch of people? I, I got that he like made people stand outside in the rain. I, I feel like they weren't exactly in a hurricane. clear. She was like, you evacuated a building in the middle of a hurricane. And he was like, it was a good tip, damn it. And she was like, no, it wasn't. (laughs) I assume people got more than wet. (laughs) Several colds, like serious colds, like it lasted a while. 
It was a cat, too, but still, it was very uncomfortable. All right, so now we get this great, amazing moment that's going to be pivotal to this film. Reporter guy is about to sit down and start his story on those damn peace talks, but then he notices that the people moving in this uh, house across the street from him are brown. (laughs) Yep. By the way, as he's typing and watching this, he's being stalked by the technically not the Halloween theme, so you can't see it. It was like half a note away. They would just go flat every fourth note or something. (laughs) Merry Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, but the evil Gutteranians are moving into the house across the street. Yeah. And I just want to say to the Gutteranians, maybe fucking... One, two, three, Maple Drive wasn't the best hiding spot for your <laughs> terrorist cell and suitcase nukes. <laughs> but this is where we get the true message of the movie. Snoop on your neighbors because they're probably terrorists. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. He, and he's looking out the window and he's watching them just unload their like, <laughs> we're going to find out nuclear weapons in the middle, like right under a, a a street light just taking him out. And he goes, he's looking out the window. He goes, those are ammo crates. Nobody else in the room. Just, yeah. Those are ammo crates. I said that to myself. I out said loud. to myself. <laughs> yes. Did what? I say that out loud just now? <laughs> Am I st- I'm How talk- are you guys enjoying lot. the movie? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we cut over to Norfolk, Virginia, totally different place, new place, wide ranging film. And even Davey are going to go have food on a boat from a Russian who knows the plot. So he's going to fill them in. Right. Basically, this is the guy that David A.R. White knows that knows the information who gives a fuck why. So he, he. they show up and he's making food. First, he's got to like slather Eve with a bunch of sexism again because it's this movie, right? God, and he like wet kisses her hand. It was <laughs> so rough. Uh, yeah, but then he explains to him that those suitcases from before have nuclear weapons. And fucking David A.R. White goes, wait, are you telling me that Rockwell smuggled in seven nuclear weapons into the U.S.? And he's like, no. I'm, I'm telling you that they fucking smuggled in nuclear ones. Nuclear, as in over relating to the nucleus, not the nucleus. You know the word new. You know the word clear. You don't know them together when they're next to each other. What the fuck? All right. Let's have um. Right. Let's have Eve say it now. Does she know how to say it? <laughs> nuclear. No, you added, wow. You made it more even than he did. Definitely not. And, and when he breaks this news to him, he sets it up so well. He goes, do you know what would happen to cities that got hit with these bombs? Like, is it explode? <laughs> <laughs> Why would they not know that? And then uh, he goes into all this detail. He's question. like, they would, their flesh would melt and rip up, like explode. Well, you, no, I was going to do a whole, yeah, I mean, explode. Yeah, but I was going to do a mm-hmm. thing. There would be and- fires and, you know, explode. <laughs> if fire would be explode. Yeah, it's fucking explode, man. But then he keeps he he keeps explaining like yeah an explosion obviously, but he also adds like yeah blows up the whole city. Also, uh, you didn't let me finish. Uh, some chaos and unrest, you know, psychologically. Yeah, yeah. Afterwards, Th- this is where we will introduce the plot of this movie, which is that sure the explosions would be good, but it's really about affecting the stock market of the United States. So that Russia and Iran can attack Israel. Because of (laughs) our stock market problems vis-a-vis the nuclear weapons. Yeah, he's like, the whole purpose is the disruption of the American government. I'm like, fuck, you could do that with Twitter. I mean, why would you go (laughs) so much trouble? (laughs) To be clear, no, no, let me explain it one more time. The the nuclear bomb goes off. You guys got that, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. No, explosion. Explosion. So nuclear explosion, you know, yeah. melty. But now the, the stock market goes down. People are on their phones, on their E-Trade apps, and we attack Israel. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if you think that seven suitcase nukes to distract the U.S. from an attack on Israel that leads up to the biblical apocalypse was all the plot that this movie needed, you are underestimating John Hagee. So we're going to pause to make roar room on our plates, but we'll be back in a minute with even more 
Jerusalem Countdown. And to the tooth gods, we offer uh, this big league chew. To the tooth gods, we offer this bag of wine gums. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. Just making our monthly sacrifice to the tooth gods. You know how it is. Yep. Got to keep our chompers in good work and order. Guys, Doing there, a sacrifice. there aren't any tooth gods. If you want healthy teeth, you just need good habits. Mm, what kind of good habits? Brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly. The, the dance? The floss dance? Because I do that pretty regularly. No, the stuff with the string in your teeth. Oh. Uh, eh. Seems like kind of a hassle, Noah. Well, Quip makes that simple. Starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste, Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean. The Quip floss dispenser comes with pre-marked strips to help you get just enough. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine is always right. Did you say it comes right to your door? It sure does. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. Hey, that's a good price. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. All right, Noah, we are in. I guess tooth gods are pretty silly, huh? They sure are. My thief! Okay, uh, you know what? Maybe we, we do both, like, just in case, right? Yeah, no, what's the harm? My thief got struck by lightning. Yeah, light, lightning, we saw. Can we just end that on Pascal's wager? Yep. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Evil Chamber of Evil's planning meeting. Mm, Muslim, 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 Muslim. Yes, yes, Muslim indeed. So, just to be clear, our great plan to take down the nation of Israel is in full effect. We have transported the seven suitcase nukes to America. Once they are activated, we can finally attack Israel. Muslim, 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 Muslim. 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 Oh, I see a hand up. Yes, question. Yes, uh, just, just real quick. Um... I, I, I'm just thinking through it. Why don't we just use the suitcase nukes just on Israel, just directly? Yes, that is a oh. good question. All good questions. Um, mm. Because then it would be all like you know, radioactive and stuff when we take it over. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Right. Go uh, sorry. Sorry. While we're at it. Yes. Yes. Uh, if we nuke seven cities in America, they won't? Go to war with us? Exactly. Is the plan? Mm. Yes. Right, because we've nuked them. Mm. Okay. Uh, but what if they do? So, yeah, seems like, if anything, they, they, they'd make us a priority at that point. And well, we'd be if, a lot of attention. Then, well, seems like if, it, yeah. If we. You know, you guys, you, plans are really hard, okay? And all you ever do is you come in and you poke holes in my ideas, but you never come up with anything of your own. So what do you have? Well, I said huh? nuke them directly. Uh, well, I have ideas. Oh, I yeah? Ideas. Okay, well, like what? Like, give us an idea then. Uh, what if you cut a loaf of bread and put soup in there so that you could have the soup right um, there? As a bread bowl, you're, bread you're bowl. describing a bread bowl. Yes, exactly. This is what I'm talking about. Muslim. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on Davy and Eve driving from their Russian informant, saying all that new plot shit out loud again in case anybody didn't catch it. <laughs> so just to make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma. Iran equals Nazis. God, no, Iran equals yeah, Nazis. Yep. Yeah. Suitcases, right. But Davy, he's sick of only knowing act one information, damn it. So, like, she knows more than he does. So he pulls over and threatens to kick her out in the freezing cold in the middle of nowhere on the highway if she doesn't tell him classified information. <laughs> <laughs> so she does. <laughs> and so basically her classified information is the FBI was going over it again. And it turns out the Bible is right about everything. 
<laughs> and the example she gives here, because again, we're going to use all of them, is the nation of Garash, which sounds just like Rasha, <laughs> if you think about it. And they, they it's do. worth pointing out that Garash has been every country that Christians who live not there have ever wanted it to be it's since forever. Gog and Magog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, he says, she says, well, according to Ezekiel, and I started dancing, Ezekiel, <laughs> time cube of the Bible, the man who <laughs> ate a scroll and fried poop bread in his book, right? Yep. She says, according to fucking Ezekiel, Russia and Persia are going to form an alliance to obliterate Israel. I'm like, I'm sure I would have remembered that in Ezekiel. Real quick, can you point to <laughs> the country of Persia on this map for me? <laughs> Now, yeah, in today's gulf. Time. I know they have a you're, gulf. You're pointing to Jamestown, Virginia. <laughs> you're drawing a cat? Okay. So, okay. <laughs> All right. So the fallen one guy gets a call that the other CIA assassin that they sent after David A.R. White has been arrested. Right. And then fucking Mossad guy catches up with the Stacey Keach catches up with. <laughs> Eve and Davey to like fill him in on yet more plot material. Sorry, it makes it so much better that he's the head of Mossad. It does. It actually does change something. It just makes it so much sillier. This is amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So she calls him up and she's like, hey, it turns out that your spook that you have in, in custody, spook, 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 we're allowed to say that when, when we're talking about a CIA agent, is actually he has a sister and that's where the next scene will be. And just to be clear, the code from the bad guy to the <laughs> yes. fallen one was the sister's bedroom needs to be cleaned. Air fucking tight code that is. Yeah. <laughs> was sister code for sister in this? Yeah, it was code for sister. You, you didn't want to? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So Davey goes back to interrogate that guy again. I wanted so much for him to have like way more handcuffs on this time. <laughs> <laughs> the right Let me number. ask you one question about your sister. Is she single? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm eating pizza and Chinese food at the same time now. I'm so single. It's rough. I don't understand how that's a negative. <laughs> Who doesn't like pizza and Chinese? And, and San Pellegrino. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, okay. So now they're going to split up. He's going to go interrogate that guy. Eve is going to go find the sister and interview her. But damn it, if she isn't already dead when he, when she, she gets there. Okay. She knocks on the door. There's a pause and the door <laughs> opens, but, but not when she knocks. No. So uh -uh. it was on like a, an <laughs> emptiness, openness timer. I. <laughs> So and then while uh, Davey's interviewing the guy, interrogating the guy, he's like, hey, I so see that you have a lot of missed calls from this number. Let me call it real quick. So he calls it. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, the phone next to the dead body starts ringing and it's Eve and it's Eve and Davey talking to each other. And they're like, well, this is awkward. We know each other's numbers. <laughs> You're He's just, like, yeah, you got 11 missed calls. It says fallen one. You guys are idiots. <laughs> really? <laughs> fallen one? <laughs> fallen one winky face eggplant emoji? I don't really know. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> but just as they're talking, the fallen one bursts out of a closet. When we which, say bursts, is ju bursts well, just to be right, clear, like huffs is, I think, the word that we're looking for here. <laughs> he, so here's what happened then. This assassin, this international assassin and master of chaos warfare, we'll get to it a little bit later, <laughs> assassinated a spy sister and then hid in her closet. Yep. <laughs> and waited for FBI agents to show up. When they did, he burst out of the closet, shoots the red shirt, right? The red shirt that she brought with him. Again, low level guy. He's, a, he's an African-American gentleman and then <laughs> runs away without shooting her. <laughs> not only runs away, but there's like a little down the stairs chase. And when she gets outside, he's not <laughs> directly outside of the door. So she instantly gives up. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, oh, he made it outside. That's that's base. We called that earlier. Yeah. We called it. <laughs> outside his base. I'm not so, even allowed to go out of the yard. Standard FBI. Me. Yeah, right. But this this CIA assassin, we've established that this guy's supposed to be the super assassin. We'll we'll get back to it and establish it some more later. 
had the drop on these two people and managed to kill zero of two of them. Well, actually, I guess eventually the black guy dies. But yeah, <laughs> not not a great super assassin. And he set up a weird, like, delayed door opening device. <laughs> also. Honestly, I didn't plan the closet. I just I spent like okay. 45 minutes on the delayed the, door. I feel like the delayed really... door would take a while, right? <laughs> so, yeah. No, there okay. was strings. So you, you got done with that and then you just dove into the closet at the last second. Yeah, you know how. Yeah, exactly. It's a front end, back end of the right. essay situation. Cool. <laughs> when did you guys agree on that outside was base, though? When, did you talk it through? <laughs> like a different day? <laughs> All right, so now we have my favorite scene in the goddamn movie. All right, it, this is a minor scene that actually could get cut. Nothing would be missing from the movie, except this is a Christian movie, so they have to keep this one. This is the scene. It's like the next morning, and the reporter is having that awkward, I should have listened to your biblical prophecy conversation with his wife. <laughs> right? Which, again, to be clear, he now <laughs> believes that because his neighbors are Muslim. Like, yeah, because we, Brown, the people. movie viewer... <laughs> know that there are suitcase nukes but he's just like i saw brown people moving in across the street i'm sorry i didn't listen to you about the biblical flood yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's those are his exact words he's like hello wife i'm a real journalist i'm very sorry that i didn't listen to you that noah's flood is literally accurate oh. <laughs> this is marriage this is like this is what you have to do this conversation is fucking amazing. First of all, we should acknowledge that her her robe is tied as though she's a, a afraid that she's going to show some throat, right? <laughs> really, it's, it's like it's tied as though she's trying to strangle herself from it. And then, so and then the husband goes. They're arguing about why he hasn't become Christian yet, right? And and the husband stops and says, "Look." Obviously, any objective person would agree that being a Christian has made you a superior person to a non-Christian. There is no disagreement on that. I just haven't decided that I want to be as good a person as you yet. Yeah, you've changed, he says. Yeah. You almost never want to do outfit stuff. And the theme, it's always the same. It's always shepherd and stuff like that. Come on. <laughs> And the wife goes, she says, look, believing in God or not believing in God are both equally leaps of faith. And the husband goes, I agree with you because Christians yep. wrote this. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm apologizing <laughs> because I don't believe in the literal flood of Noah. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Then she goes, she goes, do you even believe Jesus existed? To which he says, and I quote. Yes, of course. There's overwhelming evidence. Billions of people celebrate Christmas and Easter every year. <laughs> Did you know if you stack all the recovered manuscripts of yes. the New Testament on each other? It's literally what I wrote. Yes, I know how tall the evidence is. I've read the case for Christ. <laughs> At one point she goes, well, if Jesus wasn't the son of God, why did they crucify him? I'm like, wait, are you saying... All of those slaves along the Appian Way were the son of God. Hold on, that, <laughs> that changes everything. <laughs> and then she says, oh, maybe you just need to ask God to reveal himself. And I wanted him to be like, oh, okay. Uh, God, ready, go. Yeah, right, right. No, God has <laughs> vampire rules. You have to Whenever invite him in. It's weird. It's weird that God would have rules, actually, yeah. that you would have to... Why do these movies always think that Jesus is a pushy timeshare sale and atheists are undecided buyers? Yes! Like, right. uh, I do love Denver. And he did give us lobster. I'm just not ready to commit to going on that same vacation so many times. It's, it's weird that you don't get to pick your week. Is it weird that you don't get to pick your week? <laughs> Wait, hold on. So you're saying if we got like a few people under us getting like sub-Jesus... <laughs> We'd we'd be making money. We'd be uh, we dumb really can't afford not, not to be Christians. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we, we cut over to Davy and Eve. Davy is showing up at the spot where her partner got shot, right? And he's oh my trying God. to cheer her up by telling her to rub some dirt in her dead partner. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> truly, what's happening is that David A. R. White is like, look, black guys die. I've gone through so many black guys in my movie, so. <laughs> Like dozens. I don't know any of that's why I give them letters. I had to stop giving them I ran out of letters. You seem you seem bummed out, but you shouldn't be. Yeah, and then he has a bit of an I told you so moment 
as she cries over the corpse of her dead partner? <laughs> well, yeah, because she's like, I had a hunch and I didn't follow it. But she didn't have a hunch. What actually happened in the scene is that she felt the teapot and it was still warm. So she thought someone might still be there. That's yeah. not what hunches are. That's evidence. Well, also, she had just seen a dead body. So <laughs> yeah. you'd have a hunch about a murderer. After, that's not <laughs> a hunch, though. You just, it's a dead body. There's a murderer, maybe. So, all right. So then we cut over to the reporter typing to, again, literally one note away from the theme from Halloween. Yeah. So he decides he's going to go check out those suspicious brown people next door. <laughs> so he starts Googling who owns the house, and it turns out it's some holding company in the Cayman Islands. What? It's literally Cayman Island Trust and Holdings <laughs> LLC. Yeah. It's like the, Pan the Panama Paper Company. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Guys, so. I checked. Cayman Island Trust and Holdings LLC is available. We oh. can snap that shit up. <laughs> I thought Wilford Brimley was about he like he was gonna drop out of the ceiling and beat him up. It's like right out of the firm. It's so <laughs> not subtle. All right, so we cut back to Davy and and even they have to have that weird conversation that every Christian movie has, and they're like, "Wait, this is at least leading up to the apocalypse. Why are we trying to stop it? It doesn't yeah. make sense." It's like, yeah, "Oh, right. what if this is God's plan? Then we should probably help the terrorists." <laughs> I'm not. I feel like I lost the. I guess plot. Well, then it's gonna we're gonna have an apocalypse, right? If God's plan is for the apocalypse, then it doesn't really matter. What um, we credits, do. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, just once in one of these apocalypse movies, I want the Christian resistance to like half-ass it because they know they're just gonna rise from the dead in the final <laughs> battle. So he's just like, "No, let me go. Don't do that, Dave. You'll be killed." And he's like, "What? Nah. <laughs> uh, not when I have this feather duster, I won't. Come yeah. on, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. And by the way, I, I, I got to imagine this is not the first time anyone's ever said this to David A.R. White before. The way she brings up the subject is to say, what if we're supposed to fail? <laughs> 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 I also I love how all the not quite Christians in Christian movies describe their beliefs as like, you know, I'd like to believe in, quote, something bigger than ourselves. What is that bullshit euphemism? Antelopes are bigger than ourselves, right? Unless you're really fucking big. Well, in my personal experience, something bigger than ourselves means you have two more sentences before I cry and this date is over. So <laughs> I can only speak from my own personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is also where we learn that Eve is a completed Jew. <laughs> yes! Well, yeah, Eve's well, dad, dad is a completed is. Jew. Oh, that's right, that's right, yes. Yeah, exactly. She came from a family of completed she Jews. She is an incompleted Jew. <laughs> She's the least Jewish-looking person since Heath Enright, this well, actress. Or since Stacey Keach. You don't think I look, uh... I've been told I look like a Jewish person. Really? By another Irish person as um, an insult by to start a, a fight? It was by a Haitian woman who was my boss yeah. at a restaurant. Was this when you were a drug dealing lunch lady? No, it was after, uh, uh, not the lunch lady part. <laughs> so, and this is also where she explains to David A.R. White that her dad is the head of Mossad. Which is so crazy. <laughs> This is so, in it's like, oh, I should probably tell you, my dad is the president. Like, that's not a thing you can hide. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a moment here where she turns to him and she says, you know, she's telling him about her dad finding Christ and becoming a, a, a Jew for Jesus or whatever. And and she turns to David R. White and she goes, do you believe that Jesus died for you? And he's supposed to be an atheist at this point. But David I.R. White, the human being, the actor, cannot bring himself to say no. Right. So his character just goes, I don't know. Not not so sure about that. Yeah, scene. Like he's going to get up to heaven and talk to St. Peter and be like, OK, to be fair, I said, I don't know, which is yesing. If you think, <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't make me go back to Earth and be me. Ah, <laughs> oh. Ivanka Trump, come on. Oh. <laughs> so, and then we get 
David and, and Eve, they go to see Randy Travis because he's not being straight with them. Tell us everything the CIA knows, right? Tell us everything you know. Like, how come you look like Michael Fassbender's head got transplanted onto Christina Ritchie's body? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love, this is how FBI CIA liaisons go in their minds, right? You just meet some dude in a bar and whisper the classified bits. <laughs> I wanted them to acknowledge that, too, and just be like, hey, man, <laughs> this keeps happening. You, you say you work for the CIA. Do you ever work in a CIA building and not this restaurant with yeah, this right, right. rage whiskey <laughs> table? It's fucking noon, man. Like, when do you go to work? So, and like, yeah, and then he won't tell him. He's like, yeah, you know, this is classified stuff that you're asking me about. So Davey threatens to rough him up. <laughs> this was my favorite part of the movie. He moves to the side and there is a okay I'm gonna say little Italian boy from the 1920s movie about the Bronx <laughs> um, <laughs> gnome I would say no no yeah, yep. there we go he's there like go. get your hands off me you see that gnome that I revealed <laughs> he's with me so but he wants to know what the revolution of God is and what the revolution of God is is the Illuminati, but they can't use those words or they'll sound as dumb as they actually are. So they came up with revolution of God. It's a group of secret antichristy people who are going to take over the world. Right. And the fallen one, this is about to be no and his favorite part of the movie. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what is the fallen one? The fallen one is, quote, a psychological operations expert in chaos theory and non-traditional warfare. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so because <laughs> so that's full confirmation. This movie and everybody on it thinks chaos theory is the theory of spreading political chaos, making yep. shit chaotic. That <laughs> is what either John Hagee or David A. R. White or both think that chaos theory is he's an the entropy operative you're an <laughs> entropy operative is that what you said <laughs> oh. teacher comes in the first day of class everybody rip out the first chapter of your book good <laughs> throw that now. shit around <laughs> <laughs> you've all graduated my class thank you for attending chaos 101 <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Chaos 102 will be ripping out the last chapter yeah, of the right. book. <laughs> no, that's organized. Oh, amazing. You fucked it up. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for David A.R. White to meet Mossad Dad, right? So they, they walk out of the bar that Randy Travis is in. He's like, hey, now you sit in my truck and I will fill you in on yet more convoluted plot mechanics. Question. Does Stacy Keach, the head of Mossad, live inside a limo when he's in the United States? <laughs> so, so far. Much, much more important question. What the fuck is happening with his mustache in Thank this you. scene? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> oh, God. He, he hastily put that mustache on as they were stepping into the truck, right? It's the worst mustache we've seen in any of our movies. Okay, so to be clear, the center of the mustache is to the right of his nose. Very much. Oh, yes. That's the famous Stacy Keach cleft scar thing. <laughs> is that what that is? That's I'm pretty sure. That's the Stadenko stash? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I but will say Stacy <laughs> Keach's <laughs> mustache does. is definitely better at being a fucking mustache than David A.R. White's pronunciation of Straits of Hormuz. Um, <laughs> He says Hormaz here, but it it, it evolves no to other things. Are yeah. there's Hamuz, Hamuz, Himuz? Yeah, hummus. Hum, yeah, that, that's what it is. Is they could just barely get him away from a hummus, and he said something that didn't sound exactly like hummus, and they're like, "We're gonna run with that now." That's it. We got Straits our chance of Nucleular. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Like I only knew that he was going for Straits of Hormuz because they brought that up earlier. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, but but Stacey Keach tells him that only he can save Israel. And it's like, wow, that's weird because you're the head of Mossad. That's literally your job. I feel like that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where he tells him that literally he's like, yeah, Mossad and the CIA's uh, uh, prophecy department that they have. We kind of yes. combined up. <laughs> uh, we found out that Christianity is the literal truth. So, you know. 
keep that in mind as super you fucking awkward. I gotta this. tell you, <laughs> <laughs> and he's does he he claims that the six day war was in the Bible here, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Where what? When was that? It's in the Bible. It's just in there in general. In general, it's moving after on. the scroll eating, but before the poop eating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is an actual. Place There's a section. In the That's book a of section. Ezekiel. I just referenced a section of the Bible <laughs> <laughs> that you your little did. aunt thinks means you shouldn't be gay because yeah, of. Right. Yeah. Ask your aunt next time she's like, "Oh, I wish you wouldn't be gay." Be like, "How much poop should I eat?" Do you think? <laughs> How much poop should I bake my bread with? Hmm. <laughs> How much should the CIA study Charlton Heston's filmography for prophecy? <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, so reporter guy is getting even more suspicious of those brown people next door because they just keep being brown. So he goes next door to pretend that he's looking for his dog. <laughs> I love it. He, he brings as evidence that he has a dog, a leash. Yep. He says, have you seen my dog? And he holds up the leash. The one that goes here? <laughs> what? He was probably on the end of this earlier, is my <laughs> guess. <laughs> His dog. Uh, also, I need sugar for my dog, <laughs> who's diabetic and lost. The what okay. am I saying? But what was his plan here? He is like, have you seen my dog? And he's like, no. Do you want to check the yard? And he's like, yep. And then they sit in the backyard together and he's like, not here. <laughs> yes. Any chance my dog is in your house, <laughs> but I can go alone. He likes to climb into suitcases. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's it. Right. He just goes into the guy's backyard. and He's like, yep, no dog here. And then he leaves. That's that whole scene. He doesn't like find anything out there. <laughs> And okay, so then also Eve and Davy go to the library, right? To to like research the movie's plot. Yep. To find a Bible. Yes. At the lib where you would need to go to find a Bible is the library. Yep. Yeah, because they didn't want to pay for a hotel. So they're gonna go look up prophecies in the book of Ezekiel. <laughs> oh my god. I wanted this scene to be longer that she's just like <laughs> Okay, so what are the chances that the leaders of the world have poured out bowls of blood and bowls of anger? Oh, hmm. geez. okay. According to this, well, God is going to consume my filthiness out of me, which that sounds good. Oh. Actually, I kind of like that. Uh -huh. I guess okay. blush fifteen <laughs> times is that? Is <laughs> anything? Did you say bowls of blood? Mm. <laughs> Mike Pompeo, maybe. <laughs> I just love the idea of looking through Ezekiel to try to find clues. <laughs> Ezekiel twenty five seventeen. Maybe you can look over that one real quick. All right. Oh, and then we get the scene where the reporter has to go buy a fake ID. Magic trick. Yep. Yep. He did a magic trick. <laughs> he buys it from this guy and he goes to take it and the guy back palms the thing real bad. And I just want to say it right now, not enough criminals incorporate close-up magic into their jobs. Yep. Come on. Just like, oh, you want a dime bag? What's this? Your dirty ears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I clear those dishes while we're doing this? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm a lunch lady. So Dave and Eve are. <laughs> so Dave and Eve, they're looking through the Bible. They're looking through the files. So the, I guess. Her dad intercepted all those phone calls with voice modulator guy and the fallen one earlier. What do they do? Like just looking at the Bible's index being like nukes, comma, suitcase. No. <laughs> oh, the audio setup on the screen is a, so they have logic or whatever the Christian logic is. What they've done is they've just pulled up three tracks and then turned on all the plugins for the tracks. I paused it. Why? Why would why would they be using? Well, why would they be using an editing program? They're why would listening. you have to look at the sounds? Like, yes. yes. <laughs> like they're listening through it. One of them's be like, oh, can you give me some bass boost using the EQ? Yeah. Well, that? cut all the ums out of this. This, is, this guy's really annoying. Here. <laughs> then they have an iMovie window in front of that. It's the fucking yes. best. It's the best. And, they're, and now they're trying going to try to puzzle out that clever code that was so stupid that I had to write the whole goddamn thing down verbatim earlier, right? This is the part where they're like uh, waiting on the Decalogue from Mother, and they're like, Decalogue, Decalogue, what does Decalogue mean? <laughs> 
And the librarian shows up and she goes, it means the fucking Ten Commandments. What are you guys, stupid? Are you, are you I'm the librarian. People? I fucking love God. Okay. <laughs> thrown. Also, now it's time for the <laughs> dumbest of clues. The stork. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so as you'll recall it's earlier, they the said greatest. the stork is delivered. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the stork, as it turns out, that very night at a port in Chicago, a German boat called the Stork. <laughs> Storch. <laughs> it's it's a ch. People would go right by it. Storch. Noah. So okay, we're making code words up for stuff. You've chosen for our ship the Storch. You've chosen Stork. <laughs> Yorch. <laughs> Ianch. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, but they figured it out. The, the Decalogue, the Decalogue is a code to live by. They must be waiting on codes. Ah, from Mother, Mother Russia. That's literally the goddamn code. That's literally what they fucking figure oh, out. It's so scene. good. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. I loved it so. Uh, Storch was real. I paused and yeah. really just <laughs> sat back and enjoyed my job for a moment. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, the sad thing is, is that they're pretty sure they're nailing spy movie right now. And I don't have the heart to tell them otherwise just yet. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Can they stop the Russians from nuking Chicago to take over the Straits of Hormuz in order to overthrow Israel in time? Would there be any purpose at all in injecting an assassination plot against the Israeli prime minister at this point? Wasn't this all supposed to be leading up to the biblical apocalypse? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the I'll see you that plot and raise conclusion of Jerusalem Countdown. <laughs> but also kind of see that plot in lower because it doesn't too. fucking yeah. matter. It's, yeah. it's God's <laughs> apocalypse. I'll see that plot and change. Yes, yeah. exactly. Agent Sean Johnson, I have you at last. Never get away with it, smelling cough. That's what you think. Uh, sir, a message from the High General. Ah, uh, yes, what is it? Uh, in in front of the agent, sir? He doesn't know our codes. Speak freely. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, he says the package has been delivered to the land of 10,000 lakes. Mm -hmm. Um, Minnesota? What? No. No. What? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah what, what the hell? Well, Minnesota is literally the land of 10,000 lakes. Like, even if I didn't know that, I could Google it real easily. Dude, but I did switch know codes, switch codes. He's on to us. Use code B. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, the Odes K are on Oot Ray um, to the Esitance Pray. You're, pig Latin, you're doing Big Latin. So you said codes are en route to the president. Damn it. <laughs> Man, follow Omega Protocol. Uh, yep. Finally, just so you know, you're. Choctor Chald, and he says, Wow. Chon't churry about the trash. It will cheer up on its chone. Well, uh, yeah, I didn't get that one. I, Aha, I knew it. I now get me my chemroid dream. Okay. Choke. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to reopen on Davey with the prisoner again. And he's, he, I guess he's done now with all the half ass pretty please interrogations. It's time to bring out the fucking truth serum. <laughs> Imagine being so bad at writing this movie that you need to introduce truth serum. There was no other way to solve this truth movie. Serum. Yeah, but it, it doesn't even work. Okay, no, this is so doesn't. many layers of bullshit, right? First of all, he says, do you know what narcosynthesis is? And I said to myself, I'm thinking making drugs. But no, it's yeah. not, actually. I, I looked it up. Really? Yeah, it's recovering repressed memories under hypnosis, which is neither narco or synthetic. I mean, it is synthetic, but no, they don't mean for it to it's be. It's and not truth serum. <laughs> well, that's, that's yeah, exactly. That's also not what they're doing. So it's bullshit named bullshit, bullshitly <laughs> done by bullshit. And they don't even understand it. They get confused by their own stupid plot thing. I know. He stabs the truth serum into him like a, like a crazy stabby weapon. And yeah. then he's like, 
is it working? And I wanted the guy to be like, no. And get. <laughs> 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 and then David oh, Arroyd's like. I can't tell if he's. Okay, Shit, fuck. He, it's not uh, it's not working. It wait. It can't wait. Is it? <laughs> it's not. It is. Wait. <laughs> say again. What would uh, I say if you asked me if it's working? Yeah. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> so okay, so and Davey's so mad he he does the pick you up and push you against the wall with my elbow thing. Oh, uh, Davey's mom left him alone and he watched the dark night. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and David Arrowhite, like, winding up to be mad is one of my favorite things. <laughs> he's like, he's trying to be like the badass cop, but he has to, like, build into it. And then it turns into just, like, smell my elbow. What? Where's the nukes? Smell my elbow again. The truth, is the truth serum working now? Uh, okay. Fine. And he's going, like, where are the bombs? Where are the bombs? The guy won't tell him. And he's like, where are the bombs? He's like, we're going to blow up the Israeli prime minister he goes fuck what what like we we needed another plot point yeah <laughs> and, and and honestly it's because we needed Eve to fail a yet again in this movie right because this is where they they split up Eve's like I'll go save the prime minister and and he's like okay I'll go to Chicago and find the bombs I bet one of us will be successful <laughs> <laughs> oh and then they're they're about to run off and he goes like she goes, Shane, I know that there's been no hint of romantic interest between the two of us until this very second, but it's act three. You want to you wanna kiss or something? We're probably not going to see each other again in the movie. Yeah. Let me throw this out there. <laughs> David A.R. White's best on-screen kiss saying it right now. Really? Mm -hmm. It was strong. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. For David's work, that's his best work. Yeah, okay. He didn't, like, bump his weird chin <laughs> or his forehead. I feel like, yeah, that, that, those two positives right, right yeah, there. No, you're right. No, you're right. Everything was in the right direction and everything. He didn't scratch himself on Andrea Logan White's sharp face. Well, and that's the thing, else. though. That's the thing is that 90% of the kisses we've seen on screen with this guy are with his sh extremely sharp wife. So, yeah, I, I can see why he's a little standoffish at this point. All right. And then we get to Heath's best worst. Truck jumping guys. <laughs> <laughs> dive roll. Dive roll. It's dive so roll. Good. So these guys, they're trying to look cool. They're trying to do like cool soldier walk, but it's the snow is two and a half feet deep. And they're like, the you know, they have a two dive roll minimum in their contract. And they ah, the snow went down my neck. Guns. It went in. It's in the jacket. <laughs> it's cold. It's inside. Time out. Time out. I have to go inside. I have to go inside and start over. I'm getting hot chocolate. <laughs> they also have this amazing moment where they get to the fence and they go approaching the insertion point. And one, the Eli Bosnick story. But two, <laughs> they don't have like wire cutters or anything. No. So there's just a second and a half where these two sweet motherfucking badasses are just like, <laughs> and we are here at Do the insertion point. Fuck the hold fence. on to this. See if anyone <laughs> I'm, notices. I'm fucking the fence. You can do it every <laughs> I'll knock at this fence. You're knocking also, at it? So, well, that would be better than Dean. Okay, so Dean, the fallen one, also has to sneak onto this airfield because apparently they need soldiers on one side of the airfield plus somebody going in the front door as well for whatever reason. But don't worry, he's got a clever ruse to get by the soldiers there. Hello, today, <laughs> weather, huh? What? Sure yeah. is what? It's weathery. Do you weather. have any military words that would confirm your military oh, self? You, you got your... Say... I'm not going to murder you, if that's no, what you're wondering. You're not. <laughs> and again, okay. just to remind you how convoluted this fucking plot is, right? So he's got a bomb that he's going to try to put on the plane that the Israeli prime minister is about to get on. So what he did is he had his guys break into the airfield, shoot the guards that were there... Get on the phone on the other end that this guy's going to call and ask, should I let this guy through and pretend to be his superiors and say yes. Instead of just having those guys that already broke in, drop off the goddamn bomb. <laughs> well, you know what it was? They can't do their sweet flips oh, while they're right. holding a yes, bomb. While they're holding a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you want to die roll with C4, man? Do you want to die roll with C4? <laughs> you guys could just not dive roll. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we, sir, cannot. 
<laughs> so he goes to the plane. And he's got his bomb. And the one soldier's a little suspicious. But don't worry. He takes that soldier out with that purple flashlight laser thing that he had earlier. Remember? Taser pen. Nailed Full it. circle, motherfuckers. I mean, that already exists as a, like, not a pen thing. There's really <laughs> no reason. You build that you out. You just have it be a taser. Metal. Straight taser. <laughs> Like somebody heard laser pen and they were like, taser pen. This is amazing. Yes. <laughs> we're making a taser pen. All right. So Eve gets there just as Dean is about to blow up the plane and there's a big pew, 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 pew fight. Right. But she's not there in time. God damn it. If he doesn't manage to blow up the airplane. Well, <laughs> yeah. to show the airplane and After then pan effects, the up airplane. really quickly to show a mushroom <laughs> cloud above it. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. She sh pew, 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 and then he manages to text fucking <laughs> explode. <laughs> yeah, right. to, to 4311. Just yeah, in exactly. time. She like comes up to him. And she's like, uh, you with the cell phone, are you typing explode now into your cell phone? You have <laughs> yeah. to tell me. If you are, stop and put your hands up. So she she fails. He blows up the plane, and then he just drives away. What was she doing? And she's like, "Well, damn it!" <laughs> and, and and again, and she's not driving away on a car, right? He's driving away on one of those little carts that they drive around airports on, right? So we, said like cart, we said the cart. We said the cart was base. We said outside <laughs> earlier. I'm and outdoors. This, this is all we all of outdoors is, is base. It's part of the game. I wanted so bad for him to just like have a little old lady that he's driving to her gate at the same time. He's just, <laughs> I'm not a monster. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> All right, so now we cut over to the reporter who is, okay, this is amazing. He's decided he needs to break into his neighbor's house because they are very brown. And here's his goddamn plot. Everything in this movie is so needlessly complex. He went and got a fake ID with his neighbor's address on it and then called the locksmith to help him break <laughs> into his house by claiming that it's his. He got a fake ID for this. Oh, God. Also, I almost nominated this as my best worst. The go fuck yourself locksmith services. It's a weird <laughs> branding. You know, like the Dirty Dicks restaurants where they're mean to you on purpose. That's <laughs> this locksmith. He's like, so I'm going to... Uh, you gonna let me into the house? And he's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him to be like, oh, also, if my wife comes home and she looks like a big Muslim dude, uh, no, no, just no. So the locksmith goes to open the door and he's like, oh, wow, you guys got a pretty awesome lock, huh? And he's like, yeah, we sure do. It's like, we didn't want anybody getting in here. Mm. And he's like, I got to go get my bigger lock pick, apparently. <laughs> Question, um, are, are you a fast locksmith or like <laughs> regular speed? You're regular speed. Okay, okay. Just gonna be oh, right. you're just a regular speed locksmith. That's cool. You're going to get another tool, though, from your school bus. Why is he in a school bus, by the way? Is that a locksmith thing? Do they need a giant? Giants. Well, apparently you need a lot of amount different of lock picks. You know, like he needed a totally different type for this lock. How big are lock? Is that that's little like pieces? Right? What? Okay. <laughs> well, what what he gets is a is a Sibian, right? He, he <laughs> crams this vibrator against the door, and there's just this burn, and it pops open. And he's like, "Got it." Oh. And then he leaves, and. The reporter guy starts sneaking around the house looking for a pop scare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's decorated. This house is decorated with what is scary to David A.R. White, we're going to learn. <laughs> like, Nonsense. They have a map and pictures of what, who I assume was Sammy Davis Jr. Like, and what was going on here? <laughs> well, they, 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 they find like fucking Muslim letters on the walls, just like the ones the terrorists use, right? And and again, we're supposed to just say, like, oh, look, fucking Arabic script, they must be bad guys. <laughs> Why would they paint the walls with Arabic? If you're, this is a great okay, question. If Seems you're like a, weird a terrorist, one. You, you rent a house at 123 Maplesthorpe Lane, and you're trying to blend in, and you're like, all right, what do we um we paint some paint something on the wall something terroristy on the walls right in Arabic? yeah, yeah well, obviously, clearly yeah, sure 
All really, right. and hey, when we're when we're setting up our our terrorist maps and stuff, let's stack them one on top of the other. Yeah, that way, if somebody finds one, they'll think, oh, they're only going to bomb this town, but then they pick up the map and it'll be like, whoa, they're going to bomb two, three, no, four towns, right? Okay, That'd but still, so- let's put the red X's where we're actually going to do it. Well, so yeah, we don't oh, for sure, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. have the red X's. On I the feel bombs. like we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we're not going to have a fucking city. timer that shows you how much time is left on the bombs. Come on, right? Obviously. Okay. <laughs> what should the Arabic on the walls say, though? What do you want it to say? Like, oh, I wish there was a way of finding out what this said in Arabic. <laughs> God, I wish. <laughs> Man, do I want to know? It just says, we like are terrorists. On a Please don't translate. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, also, any chance this movie had of not being the silliest thing possible is offset by the fact that the reporter, when he finds the maps, Holds the flashlight in his mouth like a big old dick. <laughs> he does, yeah. So any tension that this movie was building is t- thrown off by this chubby gentleman being like, uh huh, uh uh uh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> cow young, not cow young. So much, so much drooling. I'm drooling. Off. I'm drooling yeah. So off. yeah. He's about to leave and he's like, oh, you know what? I just I didn't look at the basement. Those are always super creepy. I should go down there. So he goes down there. This is where he finds all the terrorism blueprints that they've left about. Why oh. Why is he still looking around at this point? Like, can he not call it in now? Like, if he was like, hello, FBI, my neighbor has terrorist stuff and guns that I found. And they'd be like, well, did you check all the rooms, including the basement? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a perfectly good explanation in the attic. Did you check the attic? Do they have yeah. like suitcases that are not bombs that would disconfirm your theory? You need to go downstairs. You can call us back. So, yeah. So so then we cut over to the scary guttering dude who's driving home just that very minute. Right? Yeah. Muslim guy and, and his henchman who appears to be Emo Phillips are driving to go get the suitcase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So he gets the call from the fallen one telling him it's time. And just then, fucking Chicago reporter guy finds all the suitcases, which oh. have smaller suitcases inside of them. Why would that be helpful? Like, him seeing suitcases just being like, oh, is that Louis Vuitton? Like, those are nice. <laughs> but even better, at this moment, we get to see what David A.R. White thinks the inside of a nuke looks like, and it (laughs) is glorious. I am so glad that this is an audio medium so that I can tell you, the listener, to picture a coffee can with wires coming out of it, (laughs) and for you to be 100% accurate in what this suitcase nuke looks like. It's an Acme Anvil and Acme Dynamite, and there's like an emu in there. It's ridiculous. (laughs) So... I honestly have no idea what a nuclear weapon would look like in such a in this. In this I guarantee case. So whatever I, it is, it's not that. I don't know either, but I promise <laughs> it's not that. So, but okay. So, but just then, as he's finding their nu- uh, suitcase nukes, and by the way, the, literally the suitcase has a suitcase that has a nuke in it. They come from Russia. I just thought that was fucking hilarious. So, just then, <laughs> thank you, the, the bad guy shows up and realized that the door's been opened. So, damn it, they're going in hot with their guns drawn. This is where he calls 911. <laughs> yes. Yeah. From his yeah. phone, 10 feet away from the bad guys. Also, quick reminder you can text 911 now. Like, I don't need <laughs> movies to know that. I know they're just building tension, but you, you need to know that you can text 911 now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's getting, he calls 911 and he's like, I have a very quiet emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> God, the opera. I wanted that scene to go on forever. Just 40. Okay, sir, I need you to speak up. Is that D is in dog or B is in boy? <laughs> really wish you were better at this. What I love about it is that the, the, the 911 operator needs so little information. It's just like, my neighbors have guns. It's like, yeah, that's legal, right? And bombs. Well, that's still not technically illegal yet they're brown <laughs> right. we'll be there in a minute brown you say brown oh we're coming we're there we're already there my favorite part he ends the call by being like please hurry and they're like yeah it's 911 it's 9 <laughs> oh, oh please hurry okay we'll hurry for sorry, this one sorry you oh, know, yeah, obviously no, no, your emergency is the important one i see okay okay right. uh, bye do i say bye <laughs> <laughs> good, I love good, I love good, you. I love what did you say? <laughs> good night so. and good luck. What? <laughs> so now David A.R. White, who up until this moment, while well, the reporter guy was rooting through the house, we keep seeing him driving like 
randomly through Chicago yelling nukes, nukes, <laughs> and not having any luck. Right. But now uh, he gets a call that the, about this 911 call. He's like, hey, we just got a report of a 911 call of a guy saying there were some bombs with some brown people. And he's like, that must be my guy. So he starts heading that way. Luckily, he just knows Chicago real well. Yeah. So he gets to the house. The bad guys hear the cops coming and start firing on the cops. But luckily, Dave can shoot even shootier than the bad guys. <laughs> they kill so many cops. I mean, to be fair, the cops probably shouldn't have worn those duck hut costumes and run back and forth in the exact same pattern. <laughs> but uh, yeah, David Ayer White that was, does not. Luckily, that was problematic. Yeah, he's just like, guys, stop yeah. strafing in a perfect pattern. <laughs> Just walk forward into the house. I'm going to go right into the house. Did that guy ding when he shot you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why did you just turn around like it's, that? It's though? a bunch of points. I, like I, I see what's duck. happening. Waka, 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 waka. <laughs> Does anybody have a power glove? I feel like yeah. that's maybe <laughs> so, an advantage all right. here. And then we get the reporter guy. He's hiding in a basement closet. And he prays to Jesus, even though he's not super sure about the whole Jesus thing. And he's like, I'll believe in you if you will, like, you know, maybe send Chuck Norris to kick a little ass. Oh, it would have been so good. I wanted so bad for Jesus <laughs> to show up and kick some ass after this. So he prays. He's like, Jesus, if you'll let me see my wife again, I'll totally suck your dick. And Jesus is like, that's what I was waiting to hear. <laughs> My plan is crushing it. Gotcha. <laughs> One reporter in suburban Chicago. Yeah. And so he prays to Jesus. He's like, Jesus, help me. And Jesus is like, yeah, I got you, man. And then he runs and tackles the terrorist. It's like, Jesus didn't even do anything. You did all this shit. <laughs> okay. There's a vital moment that happens here. Reporter guy like stands up to shoot the bad guy right before he can activate the nukes in this scene, mm -hmm. but his shirt, he's got like a sweater on over his t-shirt, and his sweater is all <laughs> fat guy scrunched. It's look, and look, mess. I fucking get it. I That's me every morning and three times a night. But he has to like <clears throat> pull down the sweater <laughs> over his tummy, and then be like, it's just been rev ah, the moment's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Hold on. The timing. I'm going to do the di I'm going to do one notch different on the belt. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Davey and, um, and the reporter guy, double team, evil Muslim dude, and his sidekick's about to detonate the bomb, but they take him out just in time. Just in time. Yeah. Well, I mean, just in time as in you have to do eight to nine minutes of last minute Python coding to activate yes, this bomb. Right, right. There's so much typing involved. It's like, all right, I can detonate this bomb as soon as I'm done with this blog post. <laughs> there was like a puzzle game with numbers yes, and like yes. you had to what match up like the mushrooms on? like Mario 3. <laughs> and then like he lit. Okay, at one point, I'm not crazy, right? He literally had to type seven wonders Yep. Three or four times in a row yep. to, like, finish the bomb go code. <laughs> yes. So dumb. You want a real complicated trigger on your bombs. That's what you want is a lot of complications. Fuck. Oh, he's doing CAPTCHA. No, that's not. I mean, it's. <laughs> Just no. show me a different. I don't even know what you're going no, for on that one. there's part of a sign <laughs> hanging into that cell on the top left. <laughs> It's part of... Uh, Wheels are right. part of a car. I don't what even do you use mean? this email anymore. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Prove to me you are a robot, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but but they... Hooray. They, they stop him before the bomb can go off. So reporter guy goes back to his wife, just like he asked Jesus for. Her, and he says, honey, it's okay. I'm a Christian now. Let's pray quick because the apocalypse is coming like, there's only four more minutes left in this movie, so <laughs> I've only got so much time. Yep. Oh. And boy, I'll tell you what, for somebody who says he doesn't like this band, he sure knows all the lyrics. Yeah, right? he he's does. like, let me pray to Jesus. And he's like quoting big, long Bible script and shit. Yeah, he, he knows it. Hey, man, <laughs> if you know Wilson Phillips, hold on. Just sing it. Dude, just love it. <laughs> just, just own it, man. <laughs> who doesn't love that song? It's fine. That family got into some weird shit. Eli, I'm yeah. sure you know about that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Killed her father. She didn't kill her father. All right, so now the movie thinks it's got some kind of reveal going here, right? <laughs> the Mr. Voice Modulator guy is talking to the fallen one. Mm -hmm. 
and having him killed like this was the end of a Jason Bourne movie. <laughs> yeah, and they put a cell phone attached to a brick of C4 in his car and it explodes. And yeah. I just wrote in my notes, God, I want to know how the people who make this movie think bombs work. <laughs> <laughs> you just call the C4 and you say, go. <laughs> but but here's the big reveal. They show that the guy on the other side of this voice modulator the whole time was Randy Travis, the CIA <laughs> agent. So the voice modulator smoothed out his southern accent? Yeah. <laughs> it did. What? That's a really, really good piece of software. Yeah, oh. no shit. I gotta no, say. but you know what that means? That means that there's footage somewhere of Randy Travis reading all these lines. So it was like, y'all need to get on down to the store, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Drop off this, that, and their nuclear decagogue. De heckalogue. De den and heckin rock along. <laughs> and somehow it came out, go to the storch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. But they are setting up a fucking sequel, and I am excited. Oh, They're setting they it up so fucking hard. It's uh, only been nine years since they made this, so I'm <laughs> quite certain. Fingers They're crossed. almost done. Oh, God, yeah, how that. many hopeful sequels have we seen right like how many movies have we seen where we're like they're like we're gonna do a second one and we're like no you're no the fuck you're not okay this one i will fund david a.r white i know you're listening i will personally i will borrow money from everybody i know with money to fund the sequel to this thing i want it to happen so bad <laughs> all right so but we have to wrap it up now if you recall, there's still an apocalypse coming. So Davy calls Eve and he's like, hey, I totally nailed my half of the plan where uh, I was supposed to find all the nukes before they went off. Your half of the plan where you stopped the Israeli prime minister from uh, getting exploded. How'd that go? Did you do good on your half? <laughs> no? mm. I am looking so at the dead bodies. Still, I've been sitting five, here this whole time, actually. 500 gets you into the Hall of Fame? <laughs> well, that's, actually that's twice now that we've split up and you got somebody killed on your half of the plan and I succeed just want to throw that out there actually. and then so they're talking on the phone and she's like yeah I feel really bad I got the prime minister killed and in that, at that exact moment by coincidence the rapture happens yes like, like if he had spent <laughs> the entire goddamn movie in his underwear eating Cheetos this movie would have ended the same mm-hmm Yep. Oh, I love when movies go full rapture. <laughs> <laughs> I love that none of the Christian Chicago cops or firefighters got raptured. Which I yeah, right, here. right. Uh -huh. What the fuck were they doing? Yeah, so just completely unrelated to the plot, everyone starts screaming, there's some weird lights in the sky, and then a bunch of clothes where Christians used to be. Yep. yep. We see, by the way, that reporter guy got in just under the fucking wire, right? Uh, him and his wife get to go to heaven together. His wife is never going to let him forget that. They're walking around heaven, going to the blowjob <laughs> fountain. She's like, you like it up here, huh? Yeah. Another couple nice. of minutes, you'd be down there with the All Scorpius right, no, locusts. Yeah. Yep, I know huh? you said that. Mm -hmm. you already have said that, honey. Right. Honey, you mm -hmm. mentioned that. Already. It was because you saying, highlighted I was right. that. Yeah, you, you yeah. were, yep. You don't want outfit right. stuff now, uh -huh. do you? But no, this is, we are in heaven. I am loving this. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, okay, so we cut back to Davy, and he's like, hey, Eve, we're still on the phone. Did the rapture just happen there, too? And she's like, yep, totally rapture. And he's like, I'll drive very fast to you. And she's like, but I'm in Washington, D.C., and you're in Chicago. And he's like, yeah, no, I figure I can cut it down to nine hours, maybe, instead of ten and a half if I... All ass? I'm Maybe coming we, for we you. each type out a different title card. Maybe you're in uh, Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in, I don't know, Wilmington, Delaware. Is that close? Yeah. And then he says, like, don't worry, Eve. There will be a sequel. It's going to take a minute. It's a really <laughs> long drive. I might look nine years older when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Also, this is where we learn that Eve's dad got raptured. She calls her dad. Oh, and, that's right. And he can't pick up. And we they like show his clothes laying there next to his cell phone. Yeah. So he was a completed Jew. Yeah. Moral of the story: you have to complete your Judaism and become Christian. Yep. The end. absolutely. Yep. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Jerusalem Countdown. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to fill in the blank for next week. So, Eli, tell us. What's on deck? Well, Noah, occasionally Pure Flix puts out a series 
that's just too damn good to miss. Really? In this case, it's the Christian remake of Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> I'm so Sons lucky. of Thunder. Shmanarchy. Oh. Yeah, Sons right. Of Sons of Sh- Archie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sons of Patriarchy. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 238 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing a show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Brian Slotnick of Evil Traps on Mars. All of their music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Close. Charles Michel is the president of the European Council and also the Antichrist. But he's being super cool about it and not being evil right now. Author of the source material John Hagee would go on to blame the Jews' disobedience to God for the Holocaust, and then later issue a formal apology to Catholicism for pointing out that Hitler was one of their guys. Allegedly. Evil terrorist cell would eventually be taken down when Sean Daughtry cracked their code of A being one, B being two, (laughs) etc. What's... Morgan, I'm just going to go right. ahead and say it right off the bat. <coughs> <coughs> just all fucking day. Just get ready for it. I'm going to be all goddamn day. So, Apologies. I'll mute where I can, um, which Eli Heath, that means I'm going to be muting my record microphone, not my. Skype microphone, so you guys get to still listen to it, but hopefully uh, I'll, I'll cut a lot of it out for Morgan. Uh, okay. Right. I was hey, going to say, I, was I, don't try mute, and... I don't have a mute button for my mic, so... I also don't have a mute <laughs> button, Morgan. That's weird that they wouldn't have mute buttons on their microphones. Isn't that weird, Morgan, that that wouldn't be a thing? I think we all have the same microphone. Yeah, we do. All right. Where's the mute button? Is it this white one? It's it, No, it's, it's not how you have it set up. It's how you... I don't think I don't know that there's a mute button on the microphone itself, and I don't think you'd want to hit the microphone itself in its casing while you're. Don't worry, Morgan. The if RE20 I feel myself does start not have me. like a no. It doesn't have like no. A, I'm no, gonna push this button. I, I, it's the way, it's like what you've pushing got. it, yeah. pushing it. Don't press it. Don't do that. You you broke it. What does major error mean? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I had a fucking roommate who had the like, the whatever the. The energy drinks, the XM, XM. Oh, so my 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 fucking Amway brother-in-law shit. right now has some magic potion that he's trying to MLM to every. It's, oh, it's so fucking sad. It's Bummer so sad because he still thinks he can break me. No, just <laughs> your, your your personal website is like a toll booth on the internet. <laughs> and what the, the fuck are you talking super- about? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> did we get you on the? Yeah, yeah, so I'm eating the chocolate caramel nut turtle. Wow, that's the worst thing to put in your mouth before a five count, <laughs> right? <laughs> one second, let me squeeze this tube of super There's glue into my butter. mouth. <laughs> one, I'm Wait, having so a handful as as of peanut butter. This underdone steak. I mean, <laughs> right, I, I, it's like, oh, I'm having the caramel with it. <laughs> oh no! One of those little squares, little rubber cement on the top. <laughs> Brocks, <laughs> like Brock. No. Um, you know what I love you want about a popping full of something? Peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about popping something into your mouth before a record is you're like, it's gonna be fine. It's like two or three seconds. It's not, but it's like fifteen it's so much and more. thirty. 15 extra seconds is an eternity when people are waiting <laughs> so for you. so much more. And then you're like, how does one chew fast? <laughs> like, nah, 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 nah. you're trying to like move your mouth up and down more quickly. It's a nightmare. <laughs> I hurt myself. I pulled it. I pulled a jaw. <laughs> is that a tooth? Uh, it's, that's, that's three teeth. That's a lot. <laughs> All right.
Let me finish these teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.